At my last market days, I did over $40,000 in sales and I still don't think they're worth it. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the different types of market days, why I don't think they're worth it and what to do instead. So what are the different types of market days? I rank them in three different levels typically. So at the very base, you have your craft shows. Those are gonna be like farmer's markets where all these craftsmen come together, right? They're gonna name them like the third Saturday or second Sundays, some kind of local event that the Chamber of Commerce will host once a quarter in some local town. And craftsmen come there, lots of soap makers and stuff like that. And you usually have a smaller crowd, less than 10,000 people. And the next level above craft shows are called market days, or I consider them market market days. The reason these are not craft shows is because a lot of the vendors that come there typically don't make their own product like they do at these local farmer market levels. And these are when you get around the 10,000 plus people attending these events. And these are vendors that are usually professional vendors that do this for a living. And you're typically competing with those vendors. These are the giant events that cost two, three, four thousand $4,000 for a booth. You have more professional type people. And so that is a step above the craft show. And then you have trade shows. And to me, what trade shows are, or almost like conventions that are industry specific. Let's go a woodworking show, right? It has a whole bunch of woodworking equipment there or pen makers convention and all these pen makers go there or a gun show or a fishing show, etc. right? So those are trade shows. It's on a different level. That's more business industry level. So if you want to think about it in one sense, at the top of the category in the B2B market is more of the trade shows and more conventions. And the top of the market in the B2C, which is business to consumer, is the market days. And then right underneath that, you have the craft shows. So I did my first two craft shows about eight years ago when I was 18, 19 years old, and I absolutely flopped at them. I had one customer buy a $1,500 table, and so I actually made money and I was ecstatic. In reality, I didn't really sell that much product. There was like three or four other woodworkers there. And then I just kept having people hammering me trying to get a deal, right? Like, oh, if you sell this for 20, would you take 10? I'm like, this is not a garage sale. This is a market days. So I really got a bad taste in my mouth. So after those first two, I actually never even thought about them again at all. So in 2022, I actually went to seven different market days, which was my first time in eight years ever going to one. And since my business is, you know, bigger now, I kind of learned the same lessons as I did when I was 18 and 19 years old. And that's kind of want to make this video for you today, because I don't think a lot of people realize the opportunity costs. So let's say you go to a market days on a Friday and a Saturday, and it's a two day show, not even money wise, just the time you could spend with your family or the time, what I like to think is the time I could be spending making more product or calling on past customers, just telling them thank you. So that's one, just the sustainability side of it. Now the opportunity cost of not making the product, that's a financial decision, right? And so if you're there on a Friday, that means you're not making product on a Friday if you're a one or two man shop, therefore your productivity goes down, therefore you don't have enough product to make, right? The next thing I wanna talk about is sustainability. I don't like to approach things with the sense that I can't do it for a very long time. And so market days is one of those things is like, if my company grows, will I still be able to continue doing this? And the answer is most likely no. And so why even start it in the first place if you can't continue to do it? Now, if you have a means to an end, right? Like you need to go to one in your local market, you know, once a year to have your face, to shake some hands, kiss some babies, do that. But don't look at it as a money-making tool. Look at it as marketing and write it off as an expense and don't try to make money at it. The other thing that I really noticed, and this, this hit me now that I'm a little bit older, I didn't really catch this when I was younger. As I'm talking to the people at these bigger market days, not the craft shows, but at these bigger ones, these guys that do this for a living, the types of vehicles they drove are not the types of vehicles that I want to drive whenever I get to the level I want to get to. I mean, these guys have been doing it 25 years. They travel 50 weeks out of the year. It's not the kind of lifestyle that I wanted versus whenever I go to trade shows, like industry trade shows, these guys are showing up, you know, they look nice. They're driving nice vehicles. Not that that's any predictor of success. They do look a lot more put together. As I went to these things, I started looking at that and I was like, if I do this for 25 years, will I end up like them? And that really kind of pulled me away. And granted, in 2022, I went to seven of them and one of them was a huge show. One of the biggest shows in Texas you can go to. And I did over $40,000 over a five day stretch. Technically, I made good money, but I don't even like going to it. I'm still going to it in 2023. I'm using it as more of a write-off and more of a marketing and branding than actually trying to make money at it. So let me give you that cost breakdown. Over a five-day stretch, we did $40,000 in sales. Let's say I made something for 10, sold it for 20. 20,000 of that $40,000 that I sold is labor materials. Okay, so we got $20,000 chunk left. And this type of market actually takes a commission from your sales, which I love markets that take a commission because if the market doesn't do good, they don't do good versus most market days, 
it doesn't matter how many people come there because they already got paid for their booth space and they don't really care how much money you make. Well, they take 11% minus $4,400. I had four people there working full time three days before preparing for the market days and the five day stretch of the market days. So that's eight days for four people. So I'm left at this point with a little under 12 grand. And you're, so you're saying at this point, man, you're still doing good. Well, I didn't factor any of my time into that yet. I didn't factor any of the drive time. And so once you factor that in, I'm left with about $7,000 after you factor in hotels, food, all that stuff. And so that leaves me making a little over a thousand dollars a day, about $1,200 a day, which some would say, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, meanwhile, all of my other employees that I have doing the day-to-day -day operations, we were doing $5,000 a day profit. Even that show, which we did $40,000 at, was still not worth it to me technically because we could have had those resources, those valuable resources, my valuable time during the Christmas season, working here and applying their productivity. So that opportunity cost of them not working at my shop and doing the stuff at the giant market days that we went to was barely worth it. Did I end up on top? Yes, but when you factor in all the time and all the effort and all the headache, I still don't think it was worth it, but our brand did get out there. So in a nutshell, why I don't typically recommend craftsmen to do market days and sell their handmade products over a long period of time is because of one, the opportunity cost of what you could be doing with your time instead of sitting behind a booth. The second thing is the scalability of it. If I were to 10X, can I go to 10X market days and employ 10X more people that are like me that can help run these and facilitate these market days? And the third point is sustainability. There is variables in these markets. Sometimes Sometimes you don't get accepted, sometimes it rains. A market day you could be counting on it just drops and you have absolutely no control over it. And the fourth thing that I haven't touched on yet, so whenever you go to the next level from the craft show to the market days, the people that sell there professionally and do this for a living typically don't make their own stuff and they have a factory making it. Even if they do make their own stuff, they have a big company, 40, 50, 60 people. They're doing it at a very low cost and their whole business model revolves around craft shows where you being the honest woodworker that you probably are, you know, you're making something for a dollar and you're selling it for $2 and you have all of this overhead. You do a great job where these guys are typically just once again, buying it for a dollar, selling it for three. And so for those reasons right there, that's why I typically stay out of those market days and craft shows because I just don't want want to build my business around it. Oh, I'm just getting me an ice cold beverage out of my Frio cooler. If you'd like one for yourself, check out FrioCoolers.com. That is the very best way to support me and this channel. Thanks guys. Now that I've told you why I don't particularly like market days for my particular business, you may be asking yourself the question like, what should I be doing now? What I would do with my time, above all, one, spend it with family. And if you do market days, bring your family along. Spend some time with family on the weekends instead of going out and trying to hustle. But if you are that weekend warrior, that hustler, just make some more products, right? Two, write thank you notes to all of your past customers. Write them a thank you note. It means a lot. You may say like, Ryan, well, I have zero customers at all. What should I do? Well, I made a video right over here about how to get your first 100 customers. If you have that question, please watch that. But one of the things I would do is target Facebook groups. So the problem with market days, it's typically this giant mass market, right? So let's say you make custom dog houses. Well, the odds are somebody having a dog there out of the thousand people that are there and they want a custom dog house are pretty slim. But if you target a Facebook Facebook group that is the local dog Facebook group of your county or your city or your area, your chances are a lot higher that somebody's gonna want a dog kennel in that Facebook group. Instead of going to that market days for that Friday and Saturday, you just connect with those people and maybe set up a meeting or maybe show them pictures, right? There's a lot of other ways to spend your time than sitting in the chair, texting on your phone, waiting for somebody to walk by and sell them something, right? I've been there, I've done it, and there are lots of lag times in market days and craft shows. Another thing that I would do, and since I did not touch on this, I think trade shows are actually a good option because they're typically industry specific, right? I mean, you can find a trade show for, let's say you make fishing pole holders. You target the couple fishing shows and you have nothing but fishermen around you. And typically you can make your money back there. Or if you sell concealment furniture, you go to a firearm show, you can sell your concealment furniture there. So there are trade shows that are really specific. And I think that if you pick the right ones, you can do really well. And then you get business connections and then your business can grow and scale. But those are typically bigger 
they're on a higher level, but they do let in smaller makers into those shows. I was one of those smaller makers multiple times, and at the shows I'm going to now, I am still a tiny speck <laughs> compared to the giant level of the industry. But what I like about those trade shows, when you talk to people, they add a couple extra zeros to the back of their numbers versus the ones at market days. They talk in terms of thousands. Typically at trade shows, they talk in terms of hundreds of thousands or millions. And so I like to be part of that group if you're wanting to grow and scale your business, right? And so those are some of the things that I would do instead of going to a market days or craft shows. Just spend your time wiser. Don't be lazy. There is other ways to get customers. You just gotta think a little bit creatively. And I think it'll suit you and your business really well. So guys, I appreciate you watching. Now guys, I know I said in my last video that I was gonna do the docking station video and how that made me $2.6 million, but it was a lot longer and harder task than we thought. Next week, I have this long form, 30 minute plus, almost like a documentary style video coming out. It's gonna be excellent. I cannot wait for you to watch it. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right. <laughs>